this episode of the Russell Brown Show, I want to talk about a great new feature here inside of Adobe Photoshop 6 combined with Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to demonstrate how you can edit 32-bit images here inside of Photoshop and you can do it non-destructively. That's right, 32-bit editing is finally here with Adobe Camera Raw 7.1. In this project, I'm working with seven different images taken by the photographer Randy J. Braun on the island of Maui. Now this is a classic image that I've worked with before. Randy's taken seven different exposures and it really has an enormous dynamic range going from the very dark to the very light and these clouds have always been really difficult to enhance and work with and I've never had the ability to do it easily until now. In this project I'm going to of course start with this image I'm going to convert it to a TIFF image and adjust the image with great tools inside of Adobe Camera Raw to get the results you see here. Then finally, I just have to go that extra step and remove the distortion in the church using adaptive wide angle as you see here. Let's get started. I'm going to select the seven exposures and I recommend at least seven exposures for this particular process. You get really great results. Selecting these exposures from Randy J. Braun, I'm going to open them with Command-R on the Macintosh or Control-R on the PC into Adobe Camera Raw. To start this project, I'm going to select one of the images that I can clearly see as you see here. What I want to demonstrate is that you're going to make some essential corrections to your image that will enhance the finished results of your HDR image. What we're going to do now is select the spot removal tool right here. Go through your image and remove any of the dust spots across your image. The way I do this is to select one image out of the set, then here in the upper left hand corner select all by clicking right here. And now if I make any adjustments, for example clicking here on the screen with my spot removal tool, it will then apply that spot removal across all of the images. Also, if I select my hand tool right here, then move over here and select this icon, the lens corrections, I can go in and make one other adjustment. And I want to make sure this is a global adjustment. Once again, all of my images are selected to the left and I can click on remove chromatic aberration. This is really critical to really great HDR images is to remove chromatic aberration. Now I'm going to remove the distortion within the image later on so I do not turn on enable lens profile correction. In this case only remove chromatic aberration. I can make other adjustments but those are the essentials and I'm now going to click done. That's been applied to all seven of my images. My next step is to actually merge these together as a single HDR image and of course a 32-bit image. Under my tools menu down here to Photoshop and over to merge to HDR Pro. This process will bring all of the images together here inside of Adobe Photoshop CS6. It will align them and then it will open the image inside of the HDR Pro controls. Okay, now that all the images are merged together, here we are inside of the Merge to HDR Pro dialog window. As you can see here in the upper right hand corner, my mode is set to 32-bit and that's important right here. In some cases, I need to remove ghosts, so I'm going to go ahead and check that. Since my clouds are moving slightly, I think I'm going to add that in here. Next, I'm going to go right down here to the left hand corner and select one of these seven exposures because when you select remove ghosts it is essential to choose one of these exposures that will give you the best looking results. So try each one of them until certain artifacts disappear within your image or you achieve the best reduction of the ghosting in your image. Now you know. Now you can adjust the controls up here in the upper right so you can see all the tones within the image but it will have no effect on your finished results so don't worry about that. I'm now going to click OK. The finished results from this will open up inside of Adobe Photoshop. OK here we are back inside of Photoshop but our story isn't done yet 
because we need to save this image as a TIFF image in order for us to open it back into Adobe Camera Raw where our story continues. Now, first, up here under the image menu, I'm going to select under mode and make sure it truly is a 32-bit image as you see here. Then I'm going to select under the file menu to save as and I want to make sure that I save it as a TIFF image under the format down here. That's essential. Let's go ahead and name this and save it into my work folder as you see here. Make sure that it's saved at 32-bit as you see here and select OK. Now we can actually close this document and begin our project inside of Adobe Camera Raw once again. Let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to go back over to Adobe Bridge, find the image that I just created right here, and I can open this inside of Adobe Camera Raw. Now, to speed things up a bit, I'm going to go ahead and select the image that I've actually finished, and I'm going to go through the different settings I used to achieve this result right here. So of course I started with this image and I finished up with this image. I'm going to go ahead and open this image inside of Adobe Camera Raw. So I can open this TIFF image that I created by combining all seven of the images together. And let's take a look at that. Again with Command R or Control R. So these are the adjustments that I made here to this TIFF image. Check it out. I can go in and adjust my highlights as I did here to really adjust the quality of the clouds and separate them from the foreground. I can adjust the whites within the image and adjust the shadows. If I drop the shadows all the way down here, you can see that there's a really nice separation between the foreground with the church and the background with the clouds. And I can then open up the detail here in the foreground. So the new controls here in Adobe Camera Raw 7.1 give me the ability to separate the highlights from the shadows. But what's even more is that the separation does not cause a lot of haloing around the edge, for example, near the clouds and the sky. And I always used to have a problem with that. But now it's much less and it's an amazing control for a really naturally toned image. Some other adjustments I made were under the hue and saturation grayscale settings right here. I went and adjusted the blues here under luminance so that I could target the blue sky as you see here and make it darker. I also went in with my adjustment brush. I could now target specific areas within the image. Check this out. In the sky, I went in and I made adjustments to darken the sky, as you see in the highlighted areas here, to make it darker. In the foreground, I made a separate selection using the auto mask feature you see over here and also show mask here. I went in, target this, and you can see that I've made a selection along the edge of the church using the auto mask, making this selection, I'll just turn those off for a moment, and then I can adjust the exposure here for the foreground area, not only global adjustments, but targeted adjustments with my adjustment brush. Once I'm all done, I can then export this image out. Now, if you go down here and select Open Image, it will open it up either as an 8-bit or 16-bit image, but it will not open it as a 32-bit image. In order to do that, I can go here and select my shift key and this changes from open image to open object. That's right, I can open this as a smart object here inside of Adobe Photoshop CS6, which means that I can go back into Adobe Camera Raw and readjust the image anytime during this project as long as I maintain it as a smart object. Check this out. I have a smart object icon. If I double click on that, of course, it will open up back inside of Adobe Camera Raw as you see here and I can continue adjusting my non-destructive image. Wow! 
With this non-destructive theme in mind, let's go ahead and take this to the next step and remove the distortion within this image using Adaptive Wide Angle. I'm going to go up to my Filter menu and down to Adaptive Wide Angle right here. Once I'm in the Adaptive Wide Angle dialog, I can go in and make some adjustments. Over here you can see that it's automatically selected a correction type of Auto. That means that it has identified the camera and lens combination and it has set up everything perfectly for me so I can start to work on the image. I'm going to adjust my scale a little bit as you see here so I have a better view of my entire image. I'm going to first go in and set up a straight line here within my image. So I want my church and steeple, as you see here, to be perfectly straight. I'm going to hold down my shift key so that this means a perfect vertical. I may extend this line a little bit higher into the image so that everything's straightened up. The next thing I need to do is draw some lines here on the left and right edge to snap those edges so that they're straight again. To do that, I'm going to click and drag along the edge. I want a parallel line that goes along the edge and I hold down my shift key as you see here. That straightens that side up and once again another line down the right hand side and that straightens that side up. Then let's get this lawn to straighten up by clicking here on the left, moving over to the right, holding down my shift key and I can straighten that up just like that. It's starting to look great. Let's go up here in the sky, click on the left, drag over to the right, hold down the shift key and straighten that up. Great! All I have to do now is scale my image back up again, just like this, reposition it here with the Move tool, do a bit more scaling to get rid of the transparency down below. That looks great. But wait, there's always one more adjustment. Going back here to my Constraint tool, I just want to straighten up this edge of the church right over here, again with my Shift key, and that's looking perfect right there. All I do now is click OK, and once again, I have some non-destructive adjustments. I can see that by turning the visibility of my adaptive wide angle off and then on again and you can see the changes right there. And just to close this all off and talk about the great new 32-bit editing capabilities, you can of course go back in to your image, double click on it and continue editing your image with all of the Adobe Camera Raw adjustments in 32-bit. This is an amazing day that you can now edit in 32-bit inside of Adobe Camera Raw combined with Adobe Photoshop in a non-destructive smart object world. Give it a try.